Now, let's get into all this in the day's news with Sky News contributor Sam Crosby. Great to have you here at the Good desk. Night. And National Senator Matt Canavan. Welcome to you both. Something for both parties in the latest news poll. Labor have all the have the important two-party preferred lead, 51-49, but coalition, the coalition has taken the lead in New South Wales, which is important for their re-election efforts. Matt, Matt Canavan, tell me, who is the happier party right now looking at these poll results? Well, look, I mean, I think the Labor Party, the first-term Labor government, has to be nervous. I mean, as you say, uh, the coalition's not in the lead in the polls, uh, uh, but it's very, very close. Uh, and uh, for any first-term opposition, that gives you a bit of hunger. Uh, there's a lot of unity on our side of politics. We've got, a, I think, a, a leader that's taken an ambitious agenda uh, on, on nuclear energy in particular, so there's something to drive for and pursue here. And certainly, uh, this next election is, is very close, and it could be anyone's for the taking. Uh, so I think that gives the opposition some some hope here. And it, it is a bit unusual just two years in a government for it to be uh, so, so, so close at this stage. It's closer than it was in Rudd's first term at this stage. It got closer, much uh, closer into the election then. Uh, and, and so, you know, you've got to look at why that's the case. And I went back and read Anthony Albanese's victory speech um, in preparation for this evening. And, mm. you know, he made a few promises there, none of which basically have come true. He, ended, he promised to end the climate wars. We're still arguing about energy because he hasn't delivered his $275 cut to power prices. He promised a voice, obviously, a complete and abject failure. He promised even to strengthen Medicare, but bulk billing rates are at record lows. Uh, he did talk a lot about the fact he came from public housing, but, you know, I don't think many people thought that the promise was that people would be forced into public housing or no housing, uh, thanks to his government. I uh, don't think they count that one as a promise kept. Yeah, no, fair enough. Now, Sam, one of the things that strikes me about these poll results is that they come on the back of weeks when Labor has been forced to talk about themselves, and they have all of these things out there, you know, that they're trying to sell to people, but it seems like no one seems to care about the much-typed stage three tax cuts, you know, can we get our money back, please, on all those ads they sold us, hey, you're getting the tax cut, and thank you, Labor, for all of that, um, but, you know, it seems like they're talking too much about themselves and not about enough about what people are going through. Look, quite probably, quite possibly. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons that the Prime Minister was so annoyed at the uh, Senator Payman's, you know, distraction in the news mm. right at the point that we were talking about the stage three tax cuts. You know, we ended up having to talk for days and weeks now about, you know, the potential new party and independent Senate and all the rest of it. Um, I, think, uh, I think, you know, to be fair, I think Matt's right. I think this is a poll that will make a number of people in the government nervous. There is some uh, good news in there for Labor. Uh, Albo is still the preferred Prime Minister everywhere but Queensland. Now, that's a problem because there is a couple of seats that we need to hold on to in Queensland that are under threat. But I think they will take some, um, uh, some comfort in being ahead of the, in those, all those other states and quite uh, comfortably. But look, to, to Matt's point about first-term governments, you go back to Bob Hawke, 84, John Howard in 96, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Rudd slash Julie Gillard, 2011... Um, and then uh, Malcolm Turnbull, 2016. First-term governments are normally pretty bad uh, at getting re-elected that first time. It's normally a lot closer when the reality sinks home to people, they, they toss the old government out, the new government comes in, and, you know, the, the, the sun uh, uh, comes up and it's the same old country and things are hard to change. So, traditionally, first-term governments don't go that well. Yeah, no, look, that's fair, Sam, but I just wanted to you know, follow up. I think up. Oh, Matt, yeah, what's that, Matt? Well, I was just going to say that I think the difference here is, one, this has been close now for, for a while. It often clo gets closer, close to the election, which I mentioned Kevin Rudd's situation had, and Bob Hawke wasn't close until he called the election. He called it a bit mm. early, and people seem to take a front at that. Um, but the other issue here is that the Anthony Albanese government only has a couple of seat majority uh, they only came to government with a one-seat majority, have won a by-election since. But no, those other governments, the first-time governments, have tended to have a bit more of a buffer. So I think that's why the government would be quite nervous here. They kind of need to win seats somewhere to stay in the majority because you're yeah, always well, going to lose a, some. I mean, that's else. an interesting point. And Sam, one of the things that I'm curious about too is the drift that we see now to the left with the Greens. You've got the 18 to 34s, 18 to 35s shifting massively now to the Greens. That's got to be 
a big concern because you're going to start to pull the party apart at both ends here if you're not careful. Yeah, look, this is something that the Labor Party's been struggling with for 20-something years now. Uh, we don't have a good answer for it yet. Mm. You know, we, we play whack-a-mole. Uh, the problem is that when the Greens win lower house seats, they tend to be pretty hard to extract from them. Um, and we, you know, I think the truth is we haven't got a great answer for how we deal with them. I think facing up to the uh, the core issues uh, that attract Greens voters, like climate change, like housing more and more, I, I think it's moved away from refugee and, and climate change now. I think it's gone to housing. I think that's got to be the answer. Mm -hmm. Actually dealing with not the political policies and the and the you know bubble and or the noise and the politics, but actually figuring out how do we get that generation of Australians into their own homes, if not well, to I own, think, to I rent. think, I think, I think, Sam, you have hit on something there. You said just a moment ago the shift has been from climate and all that, which are fairly conceptual issues, to housing, which is the real thing. I think the first side of politics that solves this housing issue mm. gives young people a chance onto their housing ladder. They will lock in a generation. That's just my thought, but, you know, who listens to me? You do. We're here on Palmer Live. And